This is how the wasp takes complete control over the cockroach. But it's not trying to inject venom or kill it. It wants to use it for its own purposes while it's still alive. In order to leave offspring, the jewel wasp needs someone's life, literally. In general, there are about 130 wasp species in the world that use a similar strategy. Usually, they target various insects like caterpillars and ants, as well as arachnids. However, this particular wasp has only one purpose. Yes, the jewel wasp chose a cockroach. And if you think the choice of this insect was random, you're wrong. Cockroaches are very tough creatures. This is precisely why they become incubators for this wasp species. But they can't just attach their larva to the underside of the cockroach without some preparation. Since the cockroach is several times larger than the wasp, the latter needs to be careful and stealthy. To subdue the cockroach, the jewel wasp uses a special venom. At the right moment, the wasp instantly jabs the cockroach, injecting the venom right into the brain. Moreover, the wasp targets certain areas of the cockroach brain, which contain neurons responsible for self-preservation. If they're neutralized, the cockroach will not run away or resist. A perfect crime. But as I said, the wasp has no intention of killing the cockroach. So the venom has reached its goal and should start working in 20 to 30 minutes. After waiting for a while, the wasp approaches the cockroach, bites off its antenna, and tastes its blood. Scientists think this is how the wasp checks that the amount of injected venom is just right. If it's not enough, the cockroach will come to its senses ahead of time. Too much venom will kill it. So the jewel wasp only leads the living incubator to its burrow after making sure everything is going according to the plan. Why waste energy if the hunt was unsuccessful? The plan is elaborated down to the smallest detail. So the venom worked. What's next? The cockroach is fully controlled by the wasp. On the way to the burrow, it's slightly docile, so the wasp helps its victim on the way. And finally, when the cockroach is in the right place, the wasp needs to attach the larva to the underside of the cockroach, and the rest doesn't require the participation of the wasp. The important thing is not to forget to seal the entrance to the burrow in order to protect your future offspring. And here you might have a logical question. What will happen when the cockroach comes back to its senses? What if it gets out of the burrow? Can it be that the wasp's efforts were in vain? Well, wasps got it all figured out. The jewel wasp larva takes about seven days to hatch. Meanwhile, the effects of a wasp venom last about 10 days. The larva even has some time to spare. But the poor cockroach doesn't stand a chance. But can a cockroach somehow stop an attack and avoid becoming a living incubator? In the beginning, I already said that cockroaches are very tough guys. To fight back, they use martial arts. <laughs> Wait a minute. Steve told me ants also face parasitic wasps. Wow, that's simply incredible. Colismosoma centum wasps came up with the most ingenious way to leave offspring using ants. As you already know, ants don't leave their dead in their colonies, they carry them out of the anthill as far as possible. The wasps also learn to exploit this behavior to their benefit. It literally takes them about zero seconds to lay eggs into an ant. See how it works? Lightning fast. All that's left is to wait until the ant dies and the body's carried outside, away from the nest where the larva can safely hatch and begin its life cycle. In previous videos, I've talked in detail about how the anthill is heavily protected in every sense of the word, so if a wasp is suddenly born in a colony full of ants, then, well, you probably realize it has no chance to survive. Listen, Steve. I've been thinking. Steve. Steve! Wow, this is a real ant colony, but you can actually control it. Finally, I can control someone other than Steve. If you like our channel, then you'll definitely like this game. After all, ants are one of the oldest and most incredible creatures on our planet. Feel their power with the Ants Underground Kingdom, the first ants and insect themed simulation and strategy mobile game. Start building your own ant empire underground. The survival of the ants depends on you. Improve the population, create ant troops from hundreds of fighters, upgrade and mutate them, and then attack other colonies and expand your lands. And don't forget to defend your territory. In the world of ants, war can break out at any moment, no matter where you are. Join 30 million players from all over the world. Create alliances or steal other players' resources instead. You can become a real ant king. 
Get free rewards being offered from the game's anniversary celebration as a bonus. Join now and prepare for the first Ant season coming in April. Players will get to see a newly upgraded battlefield and unlock exclusive championship experiences. Twelve new limited edition Super Ants are being released to help your army get season rewards to bring you and your alliances to the top of the kingdom. Download the app now. It's available both for iOS and Android. And by the way, if you meet Steve in the game, tell him to get back to work. Come on, stop playing and get back to work. And where are you going? H hold on! <sighs> That's how we live. Well, okay, let him play. Meanwhile, the link to the game is in the description of the video. Click it and join. According to the laws of nature, if representatives of a species are often killed without a chance to fight back, after a while, they learn to struggle and acquire the necessary skills for that. This is what happened with cockroaches. To keep the wasp from possessing them, they use four basic defense tactics. First tactic, best defense is offense. But it's dangerous to openly fight such a formidable enemy as a wasp. It goes in a different way. The cockroach turns its flank to the wasp, hides its head, stretches its legs, and delivers incredibly sharp and hard blows to the opponent's head. It takes about five blows to the head for the wasp to retreat. Second tactic, cockroaches are quite agile insects, and in some cases they make good use of that. When the wasp is about to sting, the cockroach turns around sharply. Even if the wasp manages to grab its head, the cockroach's agility gives it a chance to throw off the enemy, if it's lucky. Third tactic, don't forget about the legs of a cockroach. See these things? These are spines, and in the world of insects, they are real weapons. If the wasp has already climbed onto the cockroach, it put its hind legs to work, it begins to throw off the wasp and can even kill it using the spines. And finally, the most reliable tactic, fleeing. In order not to receive a dose of dangerous venom, a cockroach just quickly runs away. Well, if the venom makes its way to the brain of the cockroach, no martial arts or any other defense means will help. But what is this venom made of? Why does an affected cockroach bend to the will of the wasp? Let's find out. As I said, the venom disables certain neurons in the brain responsible for self-preservation. When they're active, the cockroach senses fear when seeing a predator, which causes the insect to flee. But before taking over the mind of the prey, the wasp first jabs it in the chest area to paralyze the front legs of the cockroach for a while, to stop it from fighting back or fleeing. The venom, which the wasp then injects into the brain, contains dopamine-like compounds. They make the cockroach, so to say, feel high and remove all anxiety. All in all, the cockroach is no longer afraid to die. The fear of death is simply turned off. That's why it so eagerly follows the wasp and allows it to calmly attach the larva to its underside. But this venom has another important feature. While the cockroach's mind is, let's say, in another dimension and the body is waiting for death, the venom begins to slow down its metabolism, prolonging the life of the insect. Its oxygen intake falls sharply for 10 days. The amount of energy produced begins to drop. Most body functions slow down to a minimum or completely turn off. The body temperature drops. The heart rate slows down. That's how the cockroach stays fresh longer and is ready for consumption by the larva. And yes, remember, there are about 130 other wasp species that have a similar strategy. They all realize that the brain is essentially just neurons that can be turned on or off. Doesn't matter whether we're talking about the brain of an insect or the human brain. This video shows how electrical current can be used to turn off certain parts of the brain. Stop moving your finger. It's quite odd. It's not your finger anymore. It's not my finger anymore. <laughs> See, the patient has lost control of his hand. Professor Vincent Walsh uses transcranial magnetic stimulation to interfere with the man's ability to move and speak. Of course, this is not the main purpose of the device. It's used to stimulate the nerve cells of the brain, which in turn relieve the symptoms of depression and improves mood. To date, such stimulation is used only when absolutely necessary, when other methods no longer help. Wasp venom affects the cockroach in a similar way. You're about to die and you just coped with your depression. All right, all right, jokes aside, actually using electrical impulses, you can control not only depression, but essentially everything. For example, our limbs move thanks to the brain, which sends signals through the spinal cord to the nerves. But if you intercept these signals, you can make anyone move against their will. In 2016, a video was published on the YouTube channel The Royal Institution, where they demonstrated how to control other people's bodies. 
It worked like that. Special electrodes were connected to the same limbs of two people. In this case, the electrodes were attached to the left hand of the girl and the right hand of a woman. The woman had to try to drink water from the glass while the girl had to move her wrist. Of course, you can't look at this without a smile. Come on, you can do it. Come on. The woman managed to drink, but that was challenging. The impulses the girl sent to her hand were automatically transmitted to the woman. That's why she couldn't calmly bring the glass to her mouth. Of course, there wasn't any total control. The girl couldn't completely manipulate the woman's hand, only confused her to some extent. The most interesting thing is that you can actually buy this device, but I wouldn't recommend using it at home. Who knows what it could lead to? But back to body control in the wild. Meet Massospora, a psychedelic fungus. Its goal is to infect all the cicadas, and it does it in a very peculiar way. The fungus forces the male to mate with females, literally. The male brain receives an order to flick the wings, imitating the mating invitation, but as you know, the fungus is transmitted by contact, and cicadas mainly come in contact with each other during mating. But the fungus doesn't stop there. Massospora mainly spreads to the butt of the cicada, and when the insect flies, the fungus scatters its spores everywhere. The cicadas hit by these spores automatically become hosts. What is it if not the life cycle of the fungus in nature? Usually, the parasites need a host to survive and nothing else. Turns out some parasites need the body of another animal to breed. For example, the Agriotypus wasp dives underwater to attach its eggs to caddis fly larvae and can stay underwater for up to 15 minutes to accomplish its task. Remember the ant lion? This is an insect that sets up sand traps for ants and actually has unusual hunting techniques. Whoa, that's creepy. But the Lassio calcidia wasp doesn't care about this trap because it needs to breed as fast as possible. It throws itself into the sand trap of an ant lion, tears it apart, and inserts its eggs in its throat. Now, it's really creepy. And this is the Costa Rican parasitoid wasp, which is different from its kin. It's unusual because it changes the behavior of the spider, namely the way it spins its web. The wasp forces its prey to create a web of very strong threads designed to support the wasp's cocoon. Such a web will not collapse, even in the rain. In some cases, the wasp uses a cunning way to get to the spider. It pretends to be caught in a web and lies motionless on its back. As the spider approaches, the wasp grabs onto it and stings it several times until the spider stops resisting. After the victim is paralyzed, the wasp has 5 to 10 minutes to attach the egg. After this procedure, the spider continues to live a normal life, not suspecting a thing, but only until the larva stays a larva. Before pupation, the future wasp releases a chemical that causes the host to spin a special web. Yes, the usual web won't do this time. It needs a special web, the likes of which the spider has never spun before. For comparison, this is an ordinary web, and this is a web for a larva, which looks much thicker and stronger. After the web is ready, the larva kills the host. A week later, metamorphosis occurs, and the wasp is born. Share in the comments which way of breeding surprised you the most. See you later.